Well, good morning and welcome home. Uh, for those not familiar, we like to say welcome home as a place not of feeling trapped, but as a place of safety, as kind of a home base, if you will, as a place where you're free to question, to explore, to understand the divine in whatever way works for you. And, and for, for me, that way is through the lens of Christ. But no matter how many times you've watched us, no matter how often you're here, whether you're here once and not for a while or whether you never make it back again, we want you to think of this place as a place of safety. And that's what we mean when we say, So I discovered this cartoonist, this artist, a few years ago named David Hayward. He has become my favorite cartoonist. Uh, if you don't recognize the name, you may know him. Well, he's Canadian, so, you know, who would blame you? Um, you may also know him as the Naked Pastor. In fact, one of his pieces is in yesterday's news newsletter. Uh, yes, it's licensed. Yes, I and all that cool stuff. Um, but anyway, it's not that cartoon that I want to talk about today, but there's another one he posted through his site just about a week ago, and it really kind of got me thinking, you know, as things kind of do sometimes. And it's been kind of swimming in my head and in my heart all week now, and I knew there was something I wanted to say about it, but I wasn't quite sure what. It was one of those weird things where he doesn't often post explanations to his meaning behind it. And if I looked at the cartoon, I really, I got it. But then when he posted his explanation, I didn't get it. <laughs> it was one of those, it's like, and so today is just kind of like my response, which is weird. I'm not famous or I'm not anyone who usually does these responses things. And it's, it's by far not trying to create any kind of problems. But um, David posted this cartoon, and you can go ahead and skip to it. Uh, it's a man building his house upon sand. We know that, and I'll quote the verse in, in a while. But Jesus asks him, why are you rebuilding your house upon sand again in the cartoon? And the man says, this is new and improved sand. So, I mean, it's a good cartoon. Uh, the artist, Mr. Hayward, Hayward, says, gave this long explanation about it. And he posted why he doesn't advise reconstruction. You know, we talk a lot about deconstruction and reconstructing and and that kind of thing, and that, those are kind of the buzzwords nowadays, but as if you follow me for a while, you know, it's not a, really a, it's not a new concept. It's not a Gen Z creation. Uh, Jesus was probably the first deconstructionist. <laughs> but um, what Mr. Hayward writes is, uh, I'm gonna quote him, I talk about deconstruction, the changing of beliefs, the feeling of the loss of faith, leaving the church in spiritual confusion. This is growth and it hurts. Many challenge my idea of deconstruction, insisting that we must believe something. They say deconstruction means the rejection of wrong beliefs to make space for co correct beliefs. I say no. Deconstruction leads to not just the questioning of beliefs, but of beliefs itself. Now, he goes on to talk about um, deconstruction is about tearing down not just specific beliefs, but tearing down the conditioning that we have to have something. And, and what he writes is, when we complete this excruciating process, we are left with space, openness, freedom, we are left with what is, he says, reality, truth, being. I think we must resist adopting or constructing another system of beliefs. I see many do this, assuming they found or are building a new and improved theology, but I guarantee you that eventually this too will need deconstructing. 
And he goes on to say, why not be happy with the space? This is where peace of mind awaits. Don't rebuild on sand, you are free. That's what he wrote. Um, I actually commented on this, like, I, I don't see it that way, but I chewed on it all week, like, maybe, well, maybe, I, and so here's what I've come up with, <laughs> if this is any help. Um, after contemplation and, and prayerful consideration, this cartoon still resonates with me, but for a different reason. I mean, and it sounds kind of arrogant of me to be like, well, the artist, you know, original artist who wrote this, that's not the real meaning. <laughs> so that's not what I'm, I'm not saying it's not the real meaning, but like so much art, it can mean different things. And that's what I liked about it. Matthew 7, 24 through 27, uh, reading from the NIV, is quoting Christ as saying, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. In contrast to Mr. Hayward, I do believe in reconstruction. But I also agree that it can be misguided. And I acknowledge the dangers of just replacing one legalistic flawed rule with another, of rebuilding on the sand, even if we think it's new and improved sand. And that's what that cartoon says to me. Rather than not rebuilding at all, Maybe we should just be paying more attention to the foundation and being less worried about how many nails we have or how, how mammoth the structure we have. Uh, for me, the foundation is becoming more and more solidly anchored in what, what's often called or what I call the red letters, if you've had one of those red letter Bibles. It's the words of Christ. It doesn't negate other things but I believe it should always carry the most weight in what we read between these covers. Um, again, the word isn't the Bible. The word became flesh, the word is Christ. And that's what the Bible is pointing us to. Not to rules and guidelines and who's in and who's out and who the cool kids are. I, I was never one of the cool kids. Uh, Carl and Lori are the cool kids, so I know. I always got stuck behind, you know, I couldn't get past the velvet rope. But um, these are the words attributed to Christ himself in the Gospels. And when he said what he did about building on rock versus sand, he tied it to putting into practice what is heard from him. And yes, the other, the other words are helpful. Paul's letters are helpful. All this stuff is helpful. But Christ didn't say, those who hear these words of mine and memorize all the scrolls and know what's going to be written by apostles and can follow the King James translation in the future. That's not what he said. He said, if you hear these words of mine, of Christ's, and put them into practice, you've got the foundation. See, he said this in, in Matthew 7, kind of at the end of what is called the Sermon of the Mount, the Sermon on the Mount. That was like all the little things from turn the other cheek. Oh, dear. You know, not an eye for an eye. He even quoted the, previous, the scrolls. Not an eye for an eye. Turn the other cheek. Love your enemies, which we've talked about, you know, who are enemies anyway. Um... All of that stuff. Uh, he also talked about if you lusted after somebody, you know, and gouging your eyes out and stuff like that. So, you know, don't come here next week with patches, please. But, uh, but he didn't say whoever follows the law of Moses is like a wise man. 
He didn't say whoever uh, does what a TV preacher says to do is like a wise man. Or whoever has the most rules on purity. Or whoever goes to church the most often. Or whoever goes to the biggest church or the fanciest church. Or whoever has the most check boxes to say, I led so and so to the Lord. He didn't say whoever gets the most baptisms. He didn't say whoever can collect the most money and, and use it for the good of God. Even. You know, he, did, he didn't say any of that. He said the wise are those who follow Christ's teachings. Christ is the foundation. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And maybe that conceptualizing actually helped, you know, all week, help me draw nearer to what the original artist in this cartoon is saying. Because I get it. We don't want to reconstruct, even when we find that foundation, if then our focus shifts to well, how big and bad and bold and fancy can I build this, and this building has to withstand everything, and because, you know, it's a war on Christianity or whatever, um, that's never been the point. And when we can see that and move just to the foundation of Christ, of love, of grace, of fellowship, of like I talked about last week, of not, not worrying so much about yokes and, you know, or, or re, re viewing what Paul writes in the lens of Christ and love. When we can do that and we continually tap into that foundation, Maybe what we rebuild can be loose. Maybe it can be more like a tent. Like, you know, I do believe this. But it's okay if that gets blown down. Because I've got these, this foundation. And I've got my tent stakes driven in. So, yeah, maybe I have to replace the tent. No big deal. I didn't invest all my time and money and effort into this tent. I invested it into the foundation. Does that make sense? I mean, in, in real estate, they talk about location, location, location. I'm talking about foundation, foundation, not foundation. I'm not going so far as Hayward as to say, don't build anything. Enjoy the space and freedom of the foundation. But I am saying, just because your sand is new and improved, doesn't make it a good foundation. Drill further. And don't be, and the cool thing about that concept, at least to me, is yes, I can build and say, okay, I believe in the Trinity. But then if something shows me that no, it's more of a unity, it's more of a this, it's, it's not like my faith is totally shaken. Because whether you believe in the Trinity or not doesn't shake the bedrock of love. And I guess that's why I see it differently. Not that we should never rebuild, but that that just shouldn't be our focus. Don't get so attached to the man-made portions of your faith, the religious aspects. Of course, come to church. I've talked before about the importance of being around people and, and about sharing and growing and not trying to go through this journey alone. But you're not going to hell if you don't come to church. Of course, maybe that's why you know the balcony isn't open yet. <laughs> Um, you know, if I'm not trying to control people's behavior. <clears throat> but see, with deconstruction, it shifts you from trying to build higher and stronger and more attractive edifices, edifici, edif buildings, <laughs> and helps us focus on digging deeply to find the bedrock. Because that is what really matters. That's how we endure through grief, through challenges, through, through little things like someone cutting you off to big things, big, big things. Some of you know, big, big things. It doesn't make it not hurt. You still lose buildings. But when you know you have the foundation, even if what you're sleeping in is a sleeping bag, you know you have safety. You're not gonna fall. You're not gonna collapse like you would through sand. And, and unlike legalistic foundations, 
when you are knocked to your knees. Sand tends to collapse in on you. Some of us have experienced that through even church trauma. The things you thought were foundational, once you disagree with them, that comes back to choke you. And then you're fighting the very things you thought were foundational. And what we can learn from that now is it's okay. The cool thing about sand is there's going to be bedrock somewhere. Keep going. Sweep it off. Keep sweeping. When you think you've got bedrock and you find out later it's sand, like you have a certain belief that you think you're just holding loosely to, but then it gets challenged and you're like, <gasps> it's all right, sweep it off. There's bedrock under there. What deconstruction has helped me do is to finally find that foundation. And yes, I do rebuild, but I do it loosely. I do it with less defensiveness, less having to feel like I'm right. It's not what some people claim rebuilding is or deconstructing is getting rid of wrong beliefs to get right beliefs. It's getting rid of the idea of having to be right. It's relying on Christ's righteousness and rightness and knowing that that takes care of everything. That's my foundation. And when I rebuild, it's more like the beliefs that provide me a little security for right now and a little maybe shade from the, from the harshness um, or maybe floaties when the, when the storms come up. You know, it's like I need to rely on this right now. And if it sticks with me, great. And if not, that's okay. I'll just travel back to the bedroom. Yes, Carl. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 no. You know, the, you were talking about building the, the house bigger. Um, a, a bigger house, number one, on an unsafe foundation is going to be easier to fall. And second of all, you put everything you can into this building, building it, building it. So when it collapses, you're left with Exactly. You're bankrupt. I mean, on earth, if there are people who are house poor, Try not to become house poor spiritually. Good one. And thanks for raising your hand. That was so cute. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty collaborative. And I was the cool kid. <coughs> you were the cool kid? Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, you kind of lost your cool card there. But um, the only rock that I need now, maybe next week I'll feel differently. But rather than collecting all the rocks and building concrete and encasing something to build that bigger man-made thing, the rock is all down here now. It's the foundation. It's the love. And I don't need any more hard-to-budge stones. I don't need that as part of a wall. I don't need rock to either build myself and I, or... I neither need rock to build myself nor to hurl at anyone else. That's what finding the foundation has done for me. If you're not there yet, just keep digging. It's okay. And if you are there, but sometimes you still get some sand in the way, I mean, I hope I'm not alone in that. Just keep sweeping it off. It's okay. If you thought you had this really solid wall and now it's kind of shaken, and you think it's worth, it's not worth the effort of even dealing with, you just want to walk away from all of it, take a breath. There's, there's still foundation down there. Just go a little deeper. But if you need to rest, just rest. You can borrow a piece of my foundation for a while if you need to. Eventually you'll find your own. Let us pray.